Estonian intelligence believes that Russia will continue to receive military equipment necessary to continue its armed aggression against Ukraine. This was stated by Colonel Ants Giviselg, head of the Military Intelligence Center of the Estonian Defense Forces, ERR reports. According to him, some analysts say that Russia is running out of military equipment, so next year the situation at the front will begin to change in Ukraine's favor. Kiviselg is not so optimistic. Yes, unfortunately, I cannot confirm that the Russian Federation will definitely run out of military equipment in 2025 because they also have some partners or allies who will still allocate or send them funds to wage war, he said. Kiviselg noted that June was extremely difficult for Russia when the occupying Russian army was losing between 1,000 and 1,800 people a day. With such losses, it is relatively difficult to maintain a high rate of advance. But at the same time, the population in Russia is still so large that there is no tendency to see that this will lead to big changes at the front, the colonel concluded. But according to other sources, Russia is running low on both weapons and workers, key resources it needs to sustain its war in Ukraine after launching a full-scale invasion two and a half years ago. The depleting weaponry means that Moscow may have to rein in its offensive and adopt a more defensive strategy. At home, meanwhile, a labor shortage is driving economic pressures as conscription age men are sent to the war's front lines. Russian defense contractors are struggling to source workers as working age men are conscripted to the military. The Bell reported, with no one to fill key roles, there are about 160,000 available positions at defense firms. The shortfall is not only due to increased demand, but also dwindling supply, the Bell noted. If trends continue, Russia will be short of about 2.4 million workers by the start of the next decade. The Kremlin now faces a difficult choice. There are social and political risks in allowing more migrants into the country, and limiting military recruitment is hardly possible when there's a war on, the Bell wrote. Recently, the defense forces managed to destroy the third Russian ferry the Slavyanin in the port of Kavkaz, which the aggressor used to provide military logistics. After that, all Russian ships disappeared in the Sea of Azov. This was stated on air by the spokesman for the Ukrainian naval forces, Dmitry Pletenchuk. He stressed that the presence of Russian military ships in the Sea of Azov is currently not recorded. Previously, they could be based in Azov or periodically enter, for example, Temryuk or periodically be in the Taganrog Bay, but now they have decided to leave the waters. Pletenchuk added, they decided to leave the waters of the Sea of Azov. This was caused, of course, first of all, by the damage to the railway ferry. They took a map, took a compass, drew a radius and realized that apparently it is not very safe to stay there. That is why this is the only reason and this is the only language that our enemy understands, the language of force. Pletenchuk emphasized, according to him, it is important that this is the last Russian ferry in the Azov Black Sea region. As the speaker specified, the Russians removed the Slavyanin from the Kavkaz Varna route and transferred it to ensure military logistics. That is, it was used for international transportation until the two previous railway ferries were damaged. It was used in the interests of the military logistics of the Russian Federation and was actually the only such element that connected the mainland railway with the Crimean railway. Pletenchuk said he specified that three quarters of the enemy's military logistics were accounted for by ferry transportation because they practically did not risk using the Crimean bridge for this purpose. Therefore, according to Pletenchuk, the Slavyanin was very important for the occupiers as a logistics element. This is a fairly large ferry. If it had tanks, it could take on 50 conventional wagons, the speaker added. He also spoke about the situation in the Black Sea. In the Black Sea, we are observing one submarine of the 136th project. This has become a practice of transition to a de facto presence in the Black Sea due to submarines. Before this, for quite a long time, more than a week, there were no units at all, but, of course, they cannot afford to completely leave the Black Sea waters unless we are talking about surface ships, the military man said. Let us recall that on July the 23rd, the governor of the Krasnodar Krai accused Ukraine of attacking the ferry. In the evening of the same day, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported the successful destruction of the ferry Slavyanin 
which the invaders used for military purposes. According to military observer Denis Popovich, the Slavyanin is a railway ferry designed to transport railway cars across the Kirsch Strait. Earlier in May, two such ferries, the Avantgarde and the Conroe Trader, were significantly damaged. After the defeat of the Slavyanin, there are no more ferries of this class in the region. The enemy is left with only automobile ferries designed to transport automobile transport across the Kirsch Strait.